23andMe. Many skeptics thought this company was involved in some DNA conspiracy where they would harvest your genetic information just to sell it back to you in the future when some medical and technological advancements were achieved, which is still up in the air. But five years ago, they were one of the hottest tech startups in the world. Even in its pre-startup phase in 2008, the saliva-based direct-to-consumer genetic testing model was named the invention of the year by Time Magazine. And hey, by 2021, they were officially a public traded company being valued at $6 billion. And everything was looking up for 23andMe. But behind the scenes, there was a bit of a flaw within their long-term business model and a lack in security features that ultimately caused for some irreversible damage to their reputation. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, we have to understand what this company is and how they became so well-known before we can delve into the events that led from their $6 billion valuation to their stock now trading at less than a dollar in just three short years. So what is 23andMe? In their own words, the customer provides a saliva sample and they use genotyping to analyze their DNA. This means looking at specific locations in the genome that are known to differ between people. Then they turn those results into a giant personalized genetic report on everything from ancestry composition to the traits of genetic health and genetic health risks. So basically you check your mailbox one day and drool inside a cup, then stuff it back into the box and ship it to their lab where they'll analyze your DNA and let you know some genetic information information about yourself. But it's not really as simple as that. At least they don't make it seem that simple. 23andMe currently offers a few different packages from basic to enhanced, and they're not cheap. They even introduced the new Ultimate package, which seems more like a last ditch effort to keep the lights on, hoping that a few customers somewhere out there will want to take advantage of reoccurring services. The basic service starts at $119 and is supposedly the most comprehensive on the market. And this is what they originally offered from the beginning, and if it's the most comprehensive, why would anyone ever spend 10 times that price? We'll get into that more, but for the time being, we're going to be focusing on the basic ancestry package. Within this package, they claim to have a 99% accuracy, which is pretty interesting with all the logistics involved in shipping and receiving spit from all around the world. But it's more interesting just overall how much DNA DNA testing has developed into becoming an increasingly powerful tool within the medical and criminal court system. But how did this company get to this point? DNA testing has been around since the 80s but was never something commercial or advertised to a larger consumer base. Even now, it's mostly used to lock people up or determine if you're the child's father or not, and it's a one and done test. See, 23andMe was actually offering a useful service when it came to genetic testing and insights into people's ancestry, but from an economic standpoint, this is where issues would arise within the business model, and why we see offerings like the new Ultimate Package trying to combat the company's struggle to garner repeat customers. Repeat customers are important for any business's longevity because it allows for the business to grow and expand into the future, and something that everyone buys once and then never buys again won't keep a business afloat. Float. And of course, a way to fix this is by offering compatible products and services. But for the 23andMe's target audience, do they really feel the need to buy anything more after seeing the initial results? Anything beyond the simple curiosity of genetic information like real health concerns or further testing you should probably go see a doctor for. As they're working to resolve this issue, they were successful in garnering something else. On the outside, 23andMe is providing information to the customer based on the customer providing information information to them. But over the course of these many exchanges of information, they've amassed more than 10 million DNA samples from people who have consented to sharing their genetic information for research. And this is what holds the most value and they use that information as a pharmaceutical company to develop its own drugs based on the discoveries from its genetic data sets. So it isn't really as simple as drooling into a cup and stuffing it back into a box, then shipping it to the lab. It's much more than that. So you'd imagine there would be a need for extreme security to protect all this genetic information, right? Let's start from the beginning. In the early 2000s, Ann Wojcicki, Linda Avey, and Paul Kuzenza had the idea that what if anyone could access their genetic information and truly understand what it means for your genetic lineage and health? And people liked the idea, especially investors in Silicon Valley. 
2007 investment documents show that 23andMe was already pursuing an expansion to the company that focused further on developing a database for research efforts. And we all know Google loves data, so they quickly jumped on board investing $3.9 million during the early stages of this company. Google's involvement later led to some conspiracies with their potential access to the data, but we're going to avoid any speculation and just stick to what we know for sure. Over the course of the next few years, 23andMe was essentially dealing with the FDA and accumulating mass amounts of money. By December 2020, the company raised around $83 million in their final Series F round, bringing the total raise to over $850 million. Just a few months later in February of 2021 was when things really changed. It's no longer feeling like a startup anymore, and the company announced that it had entered into an agreement to merge with Richard Branson's acquisition company, VG Acquisition Corp., which was valued at a $3.5 billion transaction. That summer in June, the company completed the merger with VG Acquisition Corp, and the combined company renamed to 23andMe Holding Co., which allowed them to begin trading on the NASDAQ stock exchange under the ticker symbol ME, or ME. They had a market capitalization of $6 billion. They were living the dream of any startup and seemed to be on the path for success. But looking at them today, by 2024, the valuation has fallen to just 2% of that peak. So what happened? To be honest, I'm surprised they lasted this long. Looking into the business model of 23andMe, they're pretty limited. Most of their customers who already used the service got the results they were promised and had no reason to upgrade or pay for additional services, especially for how pricey they are. We know the basic service starts at $119, and this package includes almost 3,000 geographic regions, automatic family tree builders, 30 plus trait reports, and a DNA relative finder. The next package jumps up to $229 and includes more details how genetics impact your health. Then there's a premium package with ongoing results that they are really trying hard to push because it's now the same price as the Health Plus Ancestry service. And then the final package, the most expensive at $99 a month but only optional to pay up front is the 23andMe Total Health Package, the most advanced health membership that includes next-gen sequencing. And I couldn't tell you what any of this means. But their issues don't lie just with the price or a bad business model that investors massively overvalued for a single-use product that has no way to earn continuous revenue. It's the fact that people don't trust or want to go through an online DNA service for something that in most cases it's more comforting to go to a reliable medical professional in person where you can talk and understand the results. Well that and the combination of the bad business model, the people that didn't trust 23andMe saved themselves from what was to come. Questions were being raised since 2013 as to whether the company could obtain informed consent through its web-based interactions with people who wanted to submit samples for sequencing. The company collects not only genetic and personal information from the customers who ordered the DNA tests, but also the data about other web behaviors and information that 23andMe captures through the use of website, products, software, cookies, and through its smartphone app. A combination of several individual policies within the terms and services and the privacy policy under 23andMe makes it a valuable data mine for third-party companies such as health insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, advertising companies, biotech companies, law enforcement, or other interested parties. Hence why it piqued interest early on for Google. People may not actually be aware of how the company uses the data, and there's always risks of data breaches. But it's a good thing 23andMe claims privacy first. They're a official statement on that is, when you explore 23andMe and the DNA, you entrust us with important personal information. That's why, since day one, protecting your privacy has been our number one priority. We're committed to providing you with a safe place where you can learn about your DNA, knowing your privacy is protected. In October 2023, a huge data breach occurred and the sensitive information of 7 million 23andMe users was stolen. And this was about half of the entire 23andMe customer base at the time. The stolen information included people's names, addresses, genetic data, and it was all sold online. As a result of this, we see 23andMe trading around 44 cents and at risk of being delisted from the NASDAQ. The current CEO says that she's not giving up on her company though. She's still pushing forward in pursuit of her goal to transform 23andMe from a supplier of basic ancestry and health data into a comprehensive healthcare company that develops drugs, offers medical care, and sells subscription health reports which seems to be pretty obvious from their website and their additional push for more health-related services, they're not the only one to take a swing at this business overall. 
There are other genomic companies that have done quite well, actually. Grail, for example, is still around and does still turn a profit. But Grail and 23andMe aren't exactly the same. Grail sells MCED devices, a multi-cancer early detection blood test, which 23andMe can't do. 23andMe won't tell you if you have cancer, but it can tell you if you have genetic variations that increase your risk of certain cancers. But you still have to follow up with a clinical grade genetic test ordered by a doctor to confirm this. So their attempts at trying to pivot and adapt seem to be just circling back and the same issues are predicted to continue. The breach of sensitive data for millions of users certainly didn't help their image either as they try and work to stay afloat. And as we may be bearing witness to the collapse of a once successful DNA startup, it's important to keep in mind where your sensitive information is going and to understand how companies may use this information. And in the end, it comes down to whether or not you trust that company when it stores your data. I just want to thank all the new viewers and everyone who's taken the time to watch this video. A lot of time is spent researching, writing, and editing these videos, and if it made you say, well, that's something, then we achieved our goal here today. I do all this on my own, so please consider supporting the channel. The best way to do that is liking and subscribing. I'm working on improving with each video, so I really, really do appreciate you watching this. As always, stay safe and stay curious, everyone.